on this edition of Sightings. Something is riding this scenic railway line, and it's leaving passengers and workers frightened and confused. It's haunted by something that wants to find peace. The haunting story of the mystery on board, the spirit of Oregon. Their spirit would not rest until the truth was known about that damn wreck. sightings. I'm Tim White. According to legend, Halloween is the one night of the year when the dead are allowed to come out to play. To keep the evil spirits away from the living, we're supposed to wear scary masks and costumes and place a grinning jack-o'-lantern on the doorstep. These are the traditional talismans of Halloween. But in one small town in the Pacific Northwest, it's going to take more than a carved pumpkin to keep away the ghosts who ride an old steam train called the Spirit of Oregon. Passengers, a ride through Oregon's coastal mountains on this great old train is a trip through history where the rails have a story to tell. But one chapter in the story is disturbing. The story of a great train wreck and its victims seem to have come aboard the spirit of Oregon, perhaps because she is one of the very last of a dying breed. The spirit of Oregon is very much alive. Five years ago, this was the spirit of Oregon. A great hulking piece of Americana rusting on the scrap heap. Vicki Steele took this picture before the restoration began. My husband has refurbished rail cars for the last 12 years. And one day he decided that we should have our own dinner train, so he built it, and now it's here. All aboard! The spirit of Oregon carries its passengers along a scenic 50-mile route then stops just short of an old bridge before returning home. And some people have come to believe that it is this route that has caused apparitions to appear in the coaches and on this photograph. We were showing the before pictures that we took of the train and one of the gentlemen said, hey, you've got a ghost in your picture and we kind of scuffed at it because all you could see was a blue haze. But from its maiden voyage on, there were also personal encounters with strange forces that seemed to be targeting the train staff people. There was a bartender on the train that would have glasses blow up in his hand, or, you know, dishes will fly off, or chairs will get jerked out from underneath you. We had a lot of really strange things happen, beating on the walls on our offices when there's nobody out here. And we'll see people walking through the trains when we know the train's locked up and it has a security system on it. When you catch something in the corner of your eye, you always look back. When I looked back, it was like uh, somebody had taken ice water and shot it through from my head to my toes. It was just a real cold, cold feeling. And some people have reported feeling an overwhelming sense of dread, despite the train's smooth ride and hospitable interior. I can honestly say that that's, that's probably the the most depressed I have ever been in my life. Michael and Sharon Palmer had been invited on the train for a special anniversary dinner. It was August 6, 1995, a date Michael will never forget. I was overcome by this uh, overwhelming depression. It was, it was like a despair, an emptiness. Suddenly a realization came to me that the feelings I'd been having must be very similar to the feelings that someone has just before they're going to die. And actually, I broke down. I started to cry at that time. Michael Palmer did not understand why he was experiencing those unnatural emotions, but somehow he felt it was connected to the railroad's past and the photograph. We could see it was changing. We couldn't understand it at first, and then as it kept getting clearer and clearer, we happened to mention it to a gentleman by the name of Edmund Stone. I started to wonder, I know it sounds strange, if perhaps there was a reason it was happening at that time. Stone is a producer for a Portland television station. He and director camera operator Wade Evans produced a TV special about the strange happenings on the spirit of Oregon.
Their first trip on the train occurred on August 6, 1994, one year to the day before Michael Palmer's emotional ride. I felt something was inside of me trying to get out, actually. Then I started feeling emotional. Uh, uh, tears were rolling down my eyes. I felt very sad. In fact, I actually threw up and had to, uh, and got weak, uh, couldn't stand for a moment. Like Palmer, Evans felt that he was being targeted by an unseen force with an important message. Since I was trying to record the images that were happening in the train at that time, I was more sort of a conduit for anything else that wanted to be recorded, perhaps. But what was the message? Why had these two men been transformed by an inexplicable sense of dread? And why did both incidents happen on August the 6th? And the more I, I looked into it, the more I, I thought, them, if, if there's a reason that things are happening, maybe it's connected with a train crash. In fact, on August 6th, 1935, on the same rails where the spirit of Oregon rides today, there was a devastating accident. A bridge collapsed and five men died, including the father of Mary Jane Walker. Unbeknownst to them that all the support had been taken away from the trussel. The train stopped before the bridge, but railroad workers waved the freight train on. And they didn't even get all the way over and it went down like a deck of cards. They had 112 feet to fall. They probably had something in the region of about 10 to 15 seconds of realization they were going to die a horrible death. The rails simply fell away below the wheels of the train. Five men, including Mary Jane's father, died in slow motion. The brakeman was found clutching the brake in his hand with a death grip so strong he had to be buried with the brake in his hand. Is it possible that perhaps in that last moment they understood that sadness of death. And is it possible that that feeling is being transmitted 60 years later through my cameraman and my friend? I don't know. That sounds far-fetched. But it might also be an explanation. An accident report absolved the railroad of responsibility. And the families of the victims were quietly given cash settlements. And that's the, been the way it's been for 60 years. And when we start to look, we realize, hey, maybe this wasn't such an accident after all. Maybe there was negligence. Maybe if these presences on the train are trying to tell us something, then what if they were trying to tell us, hey, look at this, because we shouldn't have died. When Stone first began discussing these conclusions, the ghost image in the photo was, again, becoming more pronounced. And not only was the original photo changing, all the copies of the photo were changing, too. You could see where they had the old-fashioned blue uh, railroad shirt and the old-fashioned vest, and then you could actually start seeing a lantern hanging down. As the images continued to develop, we showed the photo to Mary Jane Walker, who had ridden that very train with her father so many years ago. She saw three clear images. Oh, yes, I immediately recognized Ted Johnson, the engineer. And then there was uh, the man holding the lantern, and I could see, well, that's got to be Adolf Both, the brakeman. And the other would be my dad. I'm a believer. I think that it had to come. Somehow, they had to get it out, the men. Their spirit would not rest until the truth was known about that damn wreck. And now, in part because of the hauntings aboard the Spirit of Oregon, the message is getting out. Mary Jane recently dedicated a plaque near the scene of the accident. It's a tribute she hopes will outlast wreckage from the accident rusting nearby. I do hope that the spirit of Ted Johnson, Adolph Both, and my father know that we know now that it was negligence. Perhaps now that their story has been told, the five men who lost their lives on this line will be at rest. Yes, it's haunted. It's haunted by something that wants to find peace. That's all it wants. And I think, I think it's heading in that direction.
Although there have been a number of terrifying events on the spirit of Oregon, it seems that the ghosts on the train are selective about whom they target for vengeance. So far, not a single paying customer has had a haunting experience.